Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you another art supply haul. So today's art material haul is from Blick Art Materials. I really love ordering from them. I'm not sponsored in any way or affiliated with the company. I've just been a longtime customer of them and I've always been happy with my experiences that I've had with them. And so I needed a couple things for my art studio and there were a couple things that I kind of just wanted. So why don't we go on over to the table and I'll show you what I got. So I needed a couple of things, just some odds and ends for the studio, and so I thought that I would share with you what I got. The very first thing that I picked up is what you're looking at here. Let me know down below in the comment section what you think. This is the Blick Self-Healing Cutting Mat. Now I got this not just to use as a cutting mat, but really the biggest reason I got it is because it's nicely weighted, it's heavy, it's nice and flat, easy to clean, and I thought it would make a good backdrop for my videos for when I'm filming straight down. Now, ordinarily in the past, I've used a white back background, and I thought that because it was so light, it seemed to make everything in the shot darker. If I used black, it made everything too bright and overexposed. So I thought, let me go with the neutral gray. This Blick Self Healing Cutting Mat comes with the gray on the front. It's reversible to black on the other side. And it does have all the measurements and everything on here that you would need. But I really didn't get it for the purpose of uh, a cutting mat, to be completely honest. I mostly got it for the purpose of using as a backdrop. Uh, for the video, but also um, for something that I could put down to protect my work surface and I could clean up very easily because as we all know, I make a big mess with paints, acrylic paints, pastels, etc, etc. So I'm hoping that this will fit the bill, but let me know down below in the comment section what your opinion of this is. The next thing that I picked up was I got a tube of the Winsor Newton Designer Gouache in permanent white. This is a big fat tube and I brought in my little tube just for reference to show you just how much larger this tube is. This is 37 milliliters or 1.25 ounces. This is almost the size of an acrylic paint tube. It's massive and I think that Winsor Newton is starting to offer their watercolors, some of the most popular colors like all or burnt siennas, things like that in these large tubes as well, which I think is great for people who do a lot of watercolor paintings or do work large scale. You'll often not find watercolor or gouache in something this big. So thank you, Winsor & Newton, for that. Winsor & Newton makes my favorite gouache and they also make my favorite white gouache. While I do enjoy working with the M. Graham gouache, and I recently did, um, an unboxing and first impression setting up my palette type video with the M. Graham gouache. So I'll leave that linked up in the iCards and the description box as well in case you guys were interested. It's worth checking out. First impressions can be deceiving. I never do first impression reviews. Um, I will be doing a full review in the future on that gouache. But for now, just know that my favorite white gouache absolutely comes from Winsor & Newton. Their permanent white is the best. It's the brightest, the most opaque, and truly the most permanent. So it means a lot to me to be able to have this big tube because um, I go through some of these little tubes quite a bit. And I love painting in gouache. I've come to realize that I really do. So I'll be doing some gouache tutorials on this channel in the future. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss that. I also picked up some more ruby satin silver brushes. The ruby satin silvers are my favorite brushes. I got two number fours in the filbert, short handle of course. And that is because the number four filbert is my most used brush. I love using these not only for acrylics, but also for gouache. I think these work great for gouache because they are stiff enough to move the paint around because you need a slightly stiffer brush for gouache versus watercolor because it's meant to be applied more thickly. But they're not so stiff like an oil painting brush. You know, they're soft enough where you could use these for acrylic paint glazes and things too and get them very smooth. So they're a really nice solid brush and they don't hold too much water because they're a synthetic filament. 
and they're not meant to hold a lot of water. Your watercolor brushes are meant to hold quite a bit of water because that's how they carry the paint load. So they tend to over dilute the gouache. So these work just perfect for gouache. They are my favorite gouache brushes. And I like, they're my favorite acrylic brushes too. So I love that they can serve multi-purposes. So this little owl cup is where I keep most of my acrylic painting brushes. And you'll notice that a good 80% of them are the ruby satins. They're just, I have like every shape and size. They're my favorite. And the number four filbert, I go through the most common because I use it the most um, for realism and details. Going along with that, I'm gonna bring this into the shop for just a second, but there'll be a little glare. So I've taken it out of the bag, but I got the Stay Wet Handy Palette. And here it is out of the packaging. Probably going to seem very dark because when I bring anything white in, it seems to darken the camera footage really quickly. But it'll go right back in a second. The Handy, wet, the, the handy Palette is their very small portable version. I love the Stay Wet line of palettes and I have almost all of them. I have the Premier Palette, which is in a rectangle. I have... The square one, I forget what it's called, but it's it's like their medium size offering. And so I went ahead and I grabbed the Handy Palette, which is their smaller offering. And the reason that I wanted this was because I have decided that I'm going to start filming more beginner style acrylic painting videos on my channel. I want to do more acrylic painting. I want to share more acrylic paintings with you guys and more uh, tutorials and videos. And so I really cannot paint in acrylics without a Stay Wet palette. I think they really change everything for me because it keeps, it, it's a constant, if you're not familiar, let me explain. This will revolutionize your acrylic painting experience, I promise. So you get a square plastic palette. You'll also get a sponge insert, okay? And then the palette paper. Now, when you first get your palette, you'll be provided with five sheets of palette paper. I also picked up some extra. I get 30 sheets in here. What you'll want to do is you want to saturate the sponge with water and then wring it almost all the way out. If you leave it dripping with water, it will, it will over dilute the paint and you'll end up losing that good heavy body texture to your paint. So it won't be pleasant to work with. You'll just, it, trust me, rinse, wring most of the water out. And then your acrylic palette paper, which this is very durable. This is not like most disposable acrylic palette papers. This is very durable and can even be reused a couple times if, if you would like to. You want to put this into some boiling water for about 15 minutes. What I do is I boil some water in the microwave and then I put it in one of those like um, to-go coffee cups with the lid. I'll fold the paper up, put it in that cup with the boiling water carefully, put the lid on and let it soak in that very hot water for about 15 minutes. You can't leave it in too long. So don't worry about that. If you put it in there and forget it, it's gonna be fine. But once you've done that, the hotter the water, the better, boiling water preferably. You then put it on top of the sponge inside the palette and then you can set up your paints. You'll know the paper's ready because it will go from being opaque to translucent. And what happens is the water in the sponge seeps through slowly the acrylic paper and will provide a constant stream a constant feeding of water to beneath the paint so it won't skin over. It will keep the paint wet and open for a week or more. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't leave it in here and forget about it because if you do and you come back two weeks later you'll have a mold problem. But you can buy refills for the palette paper as well as for the sponge. I have been using the Stay Wet palettes in my studio for years, literally years. I have the one with the yellow lid is like a square size. I forget the specific name for it, but I think it's like the, the palette paper is 9 by 12. And then I have that really large one, the Premier palette, which I think is... 12 by 16 inches maybe. The Handy Palette 
is airtight. It works really well. I was worried that because it didn't have that rubberized lid. In fact, let me go grab my Premier and show you. This is the Master Stay Wet Premier palette. It's so large it won't even fit in the shot, but it has more of that like rubbery kind of lid, if you can see. The Handy palette is all solid plastic, but it's definitely still 100% airtight. I've had this paint in here for a couple days. I'm actually working on an acrylic painting tutorial right now. I'll give you a little sneak peek. It's going to be morning glories. And um, the paint is 100% still open and workable and fresh. So I love that. I can come back to my mixes and not have to worry about remixing. So it really saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of paint and a lot of hassle. It really changed my acrylic painting experience entirely. So I highly, highly recommend these and they work great. The other thing I was thinking of using the Handy Palette for was gouache because you really do want to use gouache fresh. That's something I've learned recently as I've been working more with gouache. You want to use it fresh out of the tube and keep it open. Once it dries, actually I have some off to the side I can show you that's dried in a palette. Once gouache dries, it really is hard and kind of crumbly, although the Winsor Newton White stays pretty good in a pan. I don't know why, but it does. But um, you can still totally use this gouache. You just have to saturate it with water, but it'll, it'll never be quite as good as if you used it fresh. So I'm actually thinking that I'm going to get a lot of use out of this as a gouache palette as well. So I'll let you know in the future how that works out in an updated video. But you just put the lid on and it snaps closed like that and then you're all good to go. Alright, so the very next thing that I picked up, and I'll try and do some close-ups of this for you guys, is the Jack Richardson's The Roz Box 2. This is supposed to be able to hold up to 68 oversized pastels full sticks and they're using the Unison brand as an example on the little sticker but the Unison or the Mount Visions are very comparable in size. But that's not what I got these for. I actually got this for my Schmincke pastels and uh, my very next video that's going to come up on this channel is an unboxing of some Schmincke pastels so be sure to subscribe so you won't miss that because it's coming up next. I got gifted to me for my birthday this year the 100 wood box set of the Schmincke pastels the full sticks which we're going to be doing an unboxing on this channel next on and also I decided to pick up about 50 open stock to add to that. And what I wanted to do with this box is I wanted to make my own Schmincke half stick set. So those pastels are pretty luxury brand pastels. They're very expensive. I feel incredibly, incredibly blessed to have gotten them. There's a little bit of a story behind those pastels, but I'll leave that for that specific video. However, this box I got specifically for that. Now, this box is a little bit expensive. I think, I believe I paid something like $80 for this, and I'm going to say something right out to you guys. Upon receiving it, I, I am not trying to, to knock the company or anything like that, but I want to say this, and we'll open it in a second. It looks kind of like a bait and tackle box that you might get from your hardware store, or even a... Um, like a toolbox or something like that. I kind of find the pattern on it a little bit aggressive, to be honest. It's, it's visually not pleasing. And I have made my own pastel boxes before with just some nice wood boxes that I found at the hardware store that I've ended up staining um, or at the craft store and then putting my own foam dividers in it. So this was unnecessary is what I'm trying to tell you. Is it a nice box? Sure. Is it worth the money? No. To be honest, no. You don't need to buy this. And if I had it to do over again, 
I, I wouldn't. I would have just gone to my local art store, craft store, and bought a wooden box with hinges and snap closures, as I've done often in the past, and put my own foam dividers in um, that you often get for free when you order open stock pastels. So is it a nice box? Yes. Do you need it? I don't think it's $80 worth of value here. It really isn't. I'm just going to be honest with you. About All right, so I actually went and grabbed this pastel box from my collection that I made myself. It's currently empty, but I am going to be using it to make a little um, like Rembrandt half stick set in the future because I want to reuse it. If you if this box looks familiar to you, it's because you saw it in my Mount Vision uh, pastel video that I had done. I'll link that up as well. I did a full review on the Mount Vision pastels and spoiler alert, I love them. So go check out that video. But at first I had made my own little half stick set. Eventually I got so many they wouldn't fit in here anymore. I ended up with a different pastel solution. But here's that very same craft foam, not expensive. It's like 79 cents for a big, big sheet. And then I just put in here a little foam device. It's the same foam, like the exact same foam pretty much, um, that you get for free when you order open stock pastels from Blick. They come in these boxes with these foam dividers. And I just made my own um, little pastel box that way and this was far cheaper and you can get any size you want already pre-made these boxes at the craft store and you can stain it I stained mine a dark cherry you can paint it if you want you can do whatever you want I, I I'm not knocking the the company because it is a nice box but I just wanted to let you guys know that this is not necessary and um, if you were looking to do the same, if you were hoping to find your own pastel box or half stick solution or something like that, there are much cheaper alternatives. There, they make pastel cabinets for a lot cheaper than this. They also, you can also use an old pencil tin, like, um, not the single tray, but the one with a double tray, like Derwent um, makes a double tray pencil tin, like their 72 sets often have two trays and they're thick and you can, you can, add some foam dividers to that. So I just wanted to let you guys know that you don't absolutely do not have to purchase these um, these boxes. And you could even go to your local hardware store and pick up something like this for like probably under 20 bucks and then put your own trays in here. All right, so I got the box all opened up um, and it's just these little, little foam inserts. They're nice, but the foam is very thin um, and then there's like these little plastic compartments. Uh, so that's like the first tray. Inside it's lined with just very simple craft foam. This is my uh, craft foam that I got from Michael's Craft Store. It's the exact same foam in there. The exact same foam on the sides. And then this foam looks to me to be the exact same foam that you would get um, inside your pastel boxes that you get for free when you order open stock pastels from uh, Blick. So it's pretty inexpensive materials that we're talking about here for the most part. And then plastic trays. The dimensions for what it says it holds, I just wanted to give it to you guys in case you're interested. It says the sturdy plastic tray can hold 34 oversized pastels up to three quarters of an inch by two and seven eighths of an inch. So that's the dimensions. And then of course you do get two of those trays. Underneath what I do like when they stack on top of each other, they have more of that foam so that it protects the pastels underneath. And I do really think that I'm gonna like this. Um, I think that it is a good option for what I want to do with it. Ordinarily, I would have just picked up one of those Weber pastel cabinets, which you guys have seen in haul videos from me in the past. I really love those. They're a great, great, great option. But I wanted to have a half stick set. I wanted to have something that would hold... Um, the full rainbow of half sticks. So if you want to see me set this up with my Schmincke pastels, uh, I'll be sure to link the video up 
when it's ready. So if you want to see me set this box up with my Shrinka Pastels to make a half stick set, be sure to subscribe. And if you're watching this in the future when that video is already up, I'll be sure to link that up in the i cards and the description box down below. And if it's not already up, be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss it. All right, so that really does wrap it up for today. Thank you guys so, so much for watching as always. I hope that you guys have a great weekend. It's Saturday where I am. It's early Saturday morning. It's rainy here, but other than that, it is a beautiful morning, and I hope that you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Happy Saturday if you are watching this on a Saturday. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.